Richard Vobes is a very confused man. There are so many subjects that he seems to be in a bit of a muddle about. It's impossible to list them all, but uh, it, it, anything from technology, including communications and the 5G phone system, law and personal finance, and the subject of today, money, coinage itself. That's what we're going to be discussing. It wasn't so long ago that Richard Vobes waved a plastic envelope containing these old coins, expressing his love and admiration for the defunct coinage system that ceased to be legal tender in 1971. For some reason that uh, we painfully explained a few weeks ago, Richard prefers these old useless coins to the kinds of coins that we might find in common circulation, a, a position that most people would find completely ludicrous. Most people. Not this guy. His name is Mark Bannerman, and if you were to see him out in public, he would probably be dressed like this, in a sort of paramilitary uniform, with a tactical vest and a little radio clip to it. That's how he dresses when he stages confrontations. And that's his thing. He's, he's got a YouTube channel full of confrontational videos where he might interact with police officers, bailiffs who might be trying to evict somebody from their home, or, in this particular case, the people who work on a toll bridge. You have not paid the appropriate toll for use of the Dunham Bridge. This is a statutory offence under the Dunham Bridge Act 1830 and 1994, and we require payment of the toll together with an administration fee of £3 at your earliest convenience. A little bit of background. The, the Dunham Bridge is a privately owned bridge between the counties of Nottinghamshire and Lincolnshire, spanning the River Trent. It's privately owned, which means that the government doesn't really have that much say in its maintenance, which is also why, if you want to cross the bridge, you have to pay a toll. It's a private toll bridge. You, you don't have to cross there. If you don't want to cross on the Dunham Bridge, you can go round another way. There are other crossings over the River Trent. It seems what's happened, though, is that Mark Bannerman has crossed the bridge without paying a toll and has now received a demand for payment, the toll plus a very small administrative fee. And it isn't even a particularly expensive toll. To drive across this bridge will cost you 50p, which is a lot less than the petrol you would uh, have to burn in order to go the long way round. So most people just pay the toll. But not Mark Bannerman, because this has given him an idea. He is going to stage another one of his famous confrontations. I'm driving from Sheffield to your bridge, Dunham Bridge. I'm only coming to pay the 50 pence charge. I'm coming from Sheffield. To pay a 50 pence charge and then going back to Sheffield? Yes. Right, I'll tell you what, sir, forget about it. I can't do that. You've got my registration number. If you take a journey from the city of Sheffield to the Dunham Bridge and then back, it's a round trip of about 70 miles. Depending on the traffic and what kind of car you drive, it'll maybe cost you 15 to 20 pounds, and it could take a few hours. And the person that Mark Bannerman phoned, the bridge office worker, knows that, which is why he rather reasonably and empathically just offered to forgive Mark Bannerman's debt. Any reasonable person would accept that offer, but Mark has his own quite bizarre reasons for not wanting to cooperate. Well, what is your registration number, sir? Uh, well, I haven't got it at hand at the moment, so, but I'm on my way anyway, so I'm not far off. This is such bizarre behaviour. He has refused the unconditional offer of forgiveness of his debt, e even though to, to go and pay in person will cost him far more than the £3.50 that he actually owes. But when the, the gentleman in the office asks for his vehicle registration number, he claims not to know it, which that's also quite bizarre because almost every motorist knows their vehicle's registration number. I can even remember the, the registration number of vehicles that I sold 20 years ago. And so for Mark Bannerman to claim that he doesn't have it to hand, well, that doesn't really pass the smell test. But what's even weirder is the question that he asks next. Yeah, do you take legal tender? Cash? We do. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Okay, then. Well, I'll see you soon. 
Okay, we'll see you then, sir. Bye. That is a weird question to ask, isn't it? Can I pay in legal tender cash? You wouldn't normally put it that way, would you? You, you might say, can I pay cash? In which case, you would get a very clear answer. Yes, he can. Can I pay in legal tender? It, it's a weird question that almost nobody would ask if they were intending to act honourably. And I think that gives us a very big clue as to what Mark Bannerman is on about. He's probably been watching Richard Vobes's show and may have picked up some very strange ideas about one's obligation to pay and what it means if uh, that payment is not accepted. I, I think we're building to something and it's really not going to be good. It's going to be another one of his really quite pathetic staged confrontations. And as we're watching this, let's try and figure out just what kind of point, if any, Mark Bannerman is trying to make. Well, I don't live in the area, so my earliest convenience is unknown at this time, but it could well be in two years' time. However, if I don't pay it, will something come through the post? Will something come through the post? Yes. The letter in his hand says exactly what will happen, that he could be taken to court. He could receive a greater fine. So the bridge company is actually offering a very convenient way to settle the bill that he now owes. It's just 50p plus a very small administrative charge. That's three pounds. Three pounds, I mean, compared to almost any other kind of motoring fine, that's nothing. If you park in the wrong kind of parking bay in most British cities, you're going to walk away with a £60 fine. If you drive through a red light, you might get points on your licence and have to pay hundreds more every year in insurance. This is a pittance. And yet, he seems to think that what he has been charged for doing something completely against the rules it is so outrageously unreasonable that he's going to make a bit of a fuss about it. Well, yeah, basically, I don't want to pay the toll charge. Right. Because uh... I didn't know until I got here, so how do I deal with this? Obviously, I've come across the bridge. How do I turn around? Who would you say Mark Bannerman has the least amount of respect for? Is it the man who is diligently doing his job as a toll booth operator? Or... Is it you and me who just watched his video in which he told us that he was going to the bridge to pay a fine and then had a conversation with the bridge office person about paying that fine and then we heard him speak the words that he did not know that it was a toll bridge despite the other fact that this was clearly signposted on either side of the road leading up to the Dunham Bridge. Mark Bannerman is a liar, but he's a bad liar, and he doesn't seem to care whether we see it or not. Which is why when he doesn't get a rise out of that bridge person, when that person doesn't seem to get annoyed, in fact, he handles this perfectly. He, he just says, if you don't want to pay the bill, you can turn around and go on your way, and, and no charge will apply. Well, Mark Bannerman does that exactly because he knows that if you turn around, you can go through the toll booth on the other side and you've got a second try to stage a confrontation. So basically, I don't want to pay the toll charge. Okay. I think it's a rip-off. So I'm doing a U-turn now. All right. I'm going back over the bridge and going a long way around. All right. Do I get charged for this? Put the camera there. Doesn't matter. If you don't want to pay, I'm not going to argue with you. The second toll booth operator doesn't want an argument either, which is a real shame for Mark Bannerman, because that is the only reason why he decided to take a completely unnecessary 70 mile journey to the Dunham Bridge and back. It's literally his only reason for doing it, because as we remember, the fine that he is claiming to want to pay could have been forgiven. All he had to do was tell that toll booth uh, administration person his registration number, the registration number that he claimed to have forgotten. It's all entirely unreasonable. It's so implausible. 
But Mark has only one chance now. Uh, there's only one more place uh, and one more person that he might be able to pick a fight with, and that would be with the kindly gent that he spoke to at the beginning, the person who offered to forgive his fine. Maybe Mark can pick a fight with that person. Hello there. I've got to come and pay. I don't, I don't believe you give receipts though, do you? What are you paying for? The bridge. I came over the other day and I didn't pay. So do you actually give re receipts? All oh, right, good. You got your registration number? Yeah. Um, actually, I'm feeling a bit claustrophobic. Whew. Oh, it's a bit tight up here. Sorry, I'm just going to have to go outside for some fresh air. That's another strange incident to include in the video. Mark's video is edited. It's not a, a continuous run. He chose to insert that little bit into his final edit. So it may be a genuine anxiety attack brought on by a claustrophobic episode, which was caused by entering that somewhat confined office space. But given that Mark has been seen to lie about so many other things in this very short video, I'm inclined to suspect that this is not genuine. I suspect that his reason for not wanting to be in that office space was because in order to film the office workers, he needed to get very close to them in the confined space. It wouldn't have been a good, clear shot of the people he was trying to stage a confrontation with. However, if he's outside in the open, his not particularly wide angle camera lens would be able to perfectly capture the confrontation that he was finally able to stage. Have you got your registration number? Here you go. Um, I need your registration number, sir. Sorry? I need your registration number. Um, I think it's K S. Uh, it's on the camera. The camera took a picture the other day. I'm not going to go searching through the CCTV. Mark is a very stupid man. But I think even he is not so stupid and forgetful that he doesn't know his own vehicle's registration mark. I think what's happening here is he's trying to be as difficult as possible, trying to create as much nuisance as possible to make these bridge employees as angry as possible, because that is his formula for staging a confrontation. If you can make people angry, then you might be able to get them to behave in an unreasonable way. And so far, he has completely failed at that. His formula is not working. But maybe Mark's luck is about to change because he has an ace up his sleeve. And that was foreshadowed by the Richard Vobes clip at the beginning of the video. Old money, that's your clue. That's not money. It's 25 pence. That's not. It is. That is not English money. That is. That's legal tender. No, it's not. It, look on the look on the website. Yeah. It's just old money that's still legal tender. No, they're no, not. It, it is. No, it's not. It's not. It, Sorry. Do you not, not accept it? You give me it back. This is a really weird way to repay other people's kindness. He repays it with confrontation and rudeness. In this case, offering to pay a, a very modest debt of three pounds fifty with a dog poo bag full of very strange and unfamiliar coins. And you can hardly be surprised at the older gentleman's reaction when, when he sees these coins, because these are not coins in common circulation. And also the fact that Mark Bannerman described those coins as old money. And in the United Kingdom, old money is a phrase that commonly refers to pre-decimalization coins, coins that were in circulation prior to 1971, when the entire country switched over to a completely different system of coinage. You can't pay for something in old money, in pounds, shillings and pence, because those are not legal tender. So if the bag contained what Mark described as old money, they are not legal tender, and the man in the office was not obliged to accept it as any form of payment. We don't accept it. Well, you told me you did on the phone. No, I didn't. You said you accept legal tender. English money that is in current use. Well, Not I know- Old stuff that's like it, that. It is still legal tender. The gentleman from the bridge office is 100% right. If those coins are old money, they're not legal tender, he is not obliged to accept them. But you know what? 
even if they were legal tender, he wouldn't be obliged to accept them either because private businesses are free to determine the terms of their own payment. If you willingly cross the bridge, that means you accept the terms of their contract. And which is strange from all these sovereign citizen types who seem to be all about respect for contract law. It, they actually don't give a damn when it conflicts with the, the only contract law they truly care about, which is um, whatever they want to do at that moment. If Mark had bothered to observe the signs, he would know that uh, the payment to the bridge can be rendered as a credit card payment or cash that is currently in circulation. To, to come up to the office and, and try to pay for it in a, in a weird kind of uncommon coin is an entirely unreasonable thing. But that is what Mark Bannerman is all about. He does completely unreasonable things and tries to provoke a reaction out of otherwise sensible people. And on this occasion, he has failed yet again. That bridge worker, that the person who originally didn't demand any money at all, the, the man who was going to forgive Mark's debts, was well within his rights to turn Mark away because Mark has done nothing but try to provoke these people. Thank you. So I need to pay the, tar the charge. What about the charge? I need to pay the charge. Mark is not a good liar. He's not a good actor. He, he's not even good at conveying a sense of outrage because we can all hear in his voice that this was precisely what he and everyone knew would happen. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And, and in this case, Mark's stupid game is to randomly confront entirely innocent people who are just going about their business by behaving in a completely unreasonable way. But what he didn't plan for was that all of these people seem to have been polite, empathic, and generous people who, who just wanted to get about their business. Mark can't comprehend something like that because he is a fundamentally dishonest man himself. He can't understand that there are people in the world that just don't operate like that. People for whom their baseline is honesty. Mark is not an honest man. He's not a man who can even comprehend that there are such people in the world, which is why he continues about this charade, this pathetic act that not even he finds convincing. What cowboy outfit is this? If my money's not good enough? Mark's money is not good enough, at least not good enough for the purpose he was trying to use it for just then, because you cannot use that kind of coin to pay for something at that kind of place. In fact, you can't use coins that are no longer in circulation to pay for anything in shops, toll booths, or, or, or literally anywhere other than maybe the cash desk of the Bank of England, which may still allow you to exchange certain coins for equivalent modern currency. Mark was trying to do something quite ridiculous, and, and it's, it's obvious that the reason why he did that was simply to provoke those people. He is zero for three. He's completely failed. He's got no content that he can put on his YouTube channel and feed to all the little conspiracy truther chicks with their mouths agape. Please feed me some confrontation, they say to Mark. Please, we're so hungry. And Mark, like the good mummy bird he is, diligently obliges because he knows that if he doesn't get his daily dose of confrontation, his YouTube channel will wither away. Which is why, a few minutes later, he went back to the bridge worker and started dangling the dog poo bag full of inappropriate coins in front of their faces. Well, it can go for free, but he will not leave the premises. Can I? I need to pay for the other day. You might be letting me free today, but what about the other day? Please, can somebody explain to me just what is this protest about? Nothing that Mark Bannerman does makes any kind of sense. I, this might seem like some kind of protest against businesses that refuse to accept cash payments, but that is absolutely not what has happened here, because 
the Dunham Bridge does accept cash. You can pay the toll to cross the bridge just by throwing 50p into the little cash receptacle bin in front of the toll booth. That's all you have to pay. But Mark refused to do that. And you can pay this toll fee and the, the, the administration fee in cash as well, £3.50. Mark refused to do that. It, he just seems to be insisting on paying the fee with old money, which is, if it's what he says it is, an entirely unreasonable thing to do, because that is not legal tender anymore. I I'm wondering if Mark even understands what the phrase legal tender means. I can't help it if you don't know what legal tender is, but it is legal tender. He's, he's, all, he's dressed in black, he's got a, he's got a, he looks as if he's paramilitary, but this way he's dressed. After pondering Mark's bizarre behaviour today, I have only one theory about what it all means. And it's actually quite a simple one. Mark believes that he shouldn't have to pay for stuff. Mark believes that when he wants a thing, it should be free to him, because other people should have to pay for it. People pay to cross that bridge. It costs 50p, and every year the people who operate that bridge raise approximately £600,000 in tolls. And most of that goes to fund the infrastructure of that bridge, to keep it maintained and safe. Some of it goes to pay the workers who man that bridge and make sure that people use it according to the bridge owner's terms and conditions, the Acts of Parliament, and in a way that is safe and orderly. Mark believes that other people should have to pay for that, but not him. Which isn't such an unusual thought, because as I've previously established, the entirety of the sovereign citizen movement is based on that one founding belief, that sovereign citizens don't need to pay for stuff, it is other people's responsibility. That is the heart of the sovereign citizen movement. The statutory offence under the Dunham Bridge Act, 1830, and he don't want my money. Oh my word, if it were free, why don't you just say so? Instead of putting signs up for 50 pence. Travel for free! It's legal tender, they don't accept it! Mark Bannerman is a liar. He has told a whole bunch of porky pies in this very short video. He lied about his reasons for travelling to the Dunham Bridge. He lied about wanting to pay off the, uh, the charge that he incurred for travelling through the bridge without having first paid the toll. And then, when he got to the bridge, he lied to two of the toll booth operators about not knowing that it was in fact a toll bridge. And when he was done lying to them, he lied to the bridge administrator, the same person who offered to forgive his debts only about an hour earlier. He lied about wanting to pay off the debt. And then he was dishonest with that person about the coins he used. And then, having done all of that, he topped it off with a dose of rudeness, shouting at that, that bridge administrator, and then howling and wailing at passers-by, claiming that crossing the bridge was free because he, his coins weren't accepted. It's really weird, dishonest behaviour. But that made me think, Maybe he was lying about one more thing. Remember, at the beginning of the video, he referred to the currency that he was trying to pay with as old money. And old money, as we've established, refers to pre-decimalization currency. But I was looking at pictures of the old money coins, and none of them resemble the, the rather big coins that were in his bag. They don't look like old money. So maybe Mark wasn't telling the truth. I, I did find these coins, they're called crowns, and they are worth 25p, which is what Mark Bannerman said they, that they were worth in this video. So, is it possible that the coins in his bag were actually modern currency, at least currency minted in the 1980s? Commemorative coins, and those are legitimate coins issued by the Royal Mint to commemorate special occasions or special individuals which would have meant that the coins really were legal tender, in a sense. Because 
The Royal Mint's website explains that these are legitimate British coins that do have a face value and are legal tender. That means you could use them to, to settle a fee in a court of law, or, or you could pay them into a bank. Because they're not coins that are commonly in circulation, businesses and anywhere other than, let's say, a, a bank, a, a place with cash handling facilities, well, they're just not obliged to take these coins. We can get an insight in, as to what Mark may have been thinking from his own written words on his YouTube page. In fact, he commented to various people asking him what the point of this little charade was, and he replied with this very long comment, including a link to the exact same page that I had been reading. It seems that Mark was fully aware that these coins were not intended for general use, and yet tried to use them that way regardless. He played a stupid game, and he won a stupid prize. It, it all seems so predictable, doesn't it? And so why was he doing it? Well, I've got one theory left. And now we're back to Richard Vobes. And just pay attention to the coin that Richard has in his hand. If only we could go back to something like silver and gold, or even pound shillings and pence, where cash is being handed over between private people so that nobody knows what you're doing with it. And it's your own private business. So given that none of my other theories make much sense, this is all I have. Was this whole little charade, this failed attempt at provocation, this uh, bizarre attempt to annoy people into a fight by deliberately paying with a form of currency that he knew was inappropriate for the circumstances? Was it all just a pathetic attempt to impress Richard Vobes so that Mark could appear on Vobes's channel, which, as we have previously and many times established, is a haven for charlatans, nitwits, grifters, con men and general ne'er-do-wells, people who want to use Richard Vobes's channel to promote their ridiculous, ludicrous theories and conspiracy nonsense. Well, I can't say I've proved myself, but it seems like the most plausible explanation, given that literally nothing else about Mark Bannerman makes sense. I, I'd love to have your suggestions. Please tell me what was the point of any of this. Oh, it's, it's really just so frustrating just watching these awful people, the, the way they interact with the rest of the world, the, the cruelty and the carelessness that is at the heart of their movement. And that is why I make this show. That is basically the point of Mind of Steel, to expose these awful people and to shine a little bit of light on the way they operate. Until next week, when I'm sure there will be more terrible people, and his name might just be Richard Vogues.